Hi, and welcome to Chapter 5, Section 1. This is going to start on textbook page 345 and go through textbook page 348. As usual, you should have your colored pencils, your regular pencil, your math book, your brain, and your ears. So now you should be looking at textbook page 345 where you've got this kid. Looks like he's lounging out on a chair. And you're going to start here with scanning the lesson. So go ahead and do that now. So as you can see, one of the things that you're going to learn about is how to represent distances below sea level. And the next thing is going to be to represent golf scores because you can have under par, over par. And so that fits nicely with the negative and positive concept. All right, so now let's look at the next piece under real world link. It says money. The bar graph shows the amount of money remaining in the clothing budget of four students at the end of one month. A value of negative two means that someone overspent, so let's go ahead and underline the negative two, and it means that someone overspent the budget and owes his or her parents two dollars, okay? So on the graph, you can see where it says money left in the clothing budget, and then you have a positive, looks like positive five for Berto, Elijah has positive two, Jenna owes her mom two dollars, and Myron went crazy and owes mom and dad eight dollars it looks like so it says what number represents owing eight dollars so there you want to look at owing eight dollars and that would be a negative eight so you want to put negative eight there and then it says what number represents having five dollars left well you can express it with positive five but really more than likely you're just going to express it with a five because that's how you have learned it thus far and then it says who has the most money left and who owes the most so you want to look at your graph, and you can see that Berto has the most money left because he has $5. And as you can see, Myron owes the most because Myron owes $8. All right, so as you can see, Berto has the most money left with $5, and Myron owes the most at negative $8, or overspent by $8. So now on textbook page 346, you want to look at the top of 346 now, where in the pink you should see use integers to represent data. So at the top it says use integers to represent data. Positive whole numbers, their opposites, and zero are called integers. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have grouped these into integers. So when they say positive whole numbers, we know what that is. When it says, when they say they're opposite, that means the negative opposite. So the opposite of positive six would be negative six. And then also zero is included as an integer. It says to represent data that are less than zero, so we're gonna change colors here, less than zero. So less than zero, you can use negative integers, okay? A negative integer is written with a negative sign. Um, data that are greater than zero are representative, or represented rather, by positive integers. So the negative integers are all going to be found back here behind zero. So I'm going to use this teal color to represent all of those. Zero is neither positive nor negative, so we're going to go ahead and make that its own special one. And then positive integers we're going to represent with the green ones. So positive. These are all the positive ones. They're gonna be found to the right on the number line. And then the last important piece at the bottom says opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero in opposite directions. This same distance from zero is very important because we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in the next section. So you just wanna get the idea that, for instance, positive two and negative two are both one, two, one, two hops from zero. All right, let's go ahead and look at example one. It says, write an integer for its, each situation. Explain the meaning of zero in each situation. A 10-yard loss. So the sport that we're probably referring to here is football, and a 10-yard loss would then be a negative integer. So it says, because it's a loss, the integer represents, um, the, ind the integer is negative 10, so you're gonna write negative 10 up here. I realize they've written it. You wanna write it again. And then it says, in football, the integer zero represents no, large, no yards lost or gained. So notice it asked you to explain the meaning of zero, and right here it says um, in football the integer, rep the integer zero represents no yards lost or no yards gained. This is going to be the part where everyone forgets. You need loss, you need negative 10, and you need the explanation. All right, on the next piece right here, you can see on the left-hand side of your page, it says the number zero can have different meanings based on real world context. So you wanna make sure that you make a little note here that zero can have different meanings. Sometimes zero represents an amount that does not change. 
Zero can also be used to represent real world ideas such as sea level. So just make a little note for that out to the side. Then it says four inches of rain above normal. So because it represents above, see that word above? So one of the key words we're looking, here, looking for here is above. So off to the side, you can write this. You can write above. You can write words like gain, increase, things like that. Those are words that you are going to see um, for a positive representation. Then it says, because it represents above, the integer 4, the integer is 4. In this situation, the integer 0 represents the normal amount of rain. So it's very important that you get the explanation. So again, we have three pieces. We have above, which is right here. We have the integer, which is 4, and we have what the explanation for 0 is. So that's going to be, those are going to be the pieces that you need, the three. I'm going to go ahead and erase this pink mark over here so that it's not distracting. So you have three pieces. On number three, it says a $48 deposit into a savings account. So the key word in this example is going to be deposit. And it says because it represents an increase, the integer is, and you want to write 48 because it represents an increase. In this situation, the integer zero represents, go ahead and think about that for a second. And the way they've expressed the answer is, um, the integer zero represents neither, neither a deposit or a withdrawal. So you wanna write neither a deposit or a withdrawal. <coughs> so now you're gonna try these on your own. It says, got it, do these problems to find out. Before you do these problems, though, I want you to underline where it says write an integer. So you need to have an integer. I'm going to use a different color now to underline, explain the meaning of zero in each situation. So you want to go ahead and have those two pieces to it. All right, so for this example, the integer that you should have written was two. I would have also accepted positive two, but two is the more traditionally accepted answer. And it says the integer zero represents neither a gain or a loss. So you want to make sure that your explanation there makes sense and that you know how to come up with that for the next one. All right, for number two, it says 10 degrees, 10 degrees below zero. So your integer is going to be negative 10, and that's for those instructions there. And then to explain the meaning of zero, the integer zero represents zero degrees. So you would want to write the integer zero represents zero degrees. All right, so that seems like it's pretty simple so far. Now you should be looking at textbook page 347, which is gonna to be to graph integers. It says integers and sets of integers can be graphed on a horizontal or a vertical number line. So just a second, just for a second, we wanna think about what those words horizontal and vertical mean. So remember that horizontal is gonna be like the horizon where the sun rises. So this is horizontal. And vertical, is gonna be like vertical blinds. That's how I always think about it. But vertical is going to be up and down like the blinds that are in your house. Um, um, on the patio doors, a lot of you probably have them where you have to pull on the strings so that you turn them around. So that's how I remember the difference between horizontal and vertical. Then it says to graph a point on the number line, draw a point on the number line at its location. That seems pretty straightforward. A set of integers is written using braces such as 2, comma, negative 9, comma, 0. So basically what that's saying is the bracket is just including when you have to graph more than one, po more than one point for a problem. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says graph negative 7 on a number line. So I'm not going to make you redraw the number line. That seems pretty excessive. So you're just going to put a little dot right there on the negative 7. I'm pretty sure we all know how to graph that on the number line. The next one says graph the set of integers, negative 4, 2, and negative 1. So let's go ahead and also I'm going to be kind and just have you graph them negative 4, 2, and negative 1. Make sure that you know where each one of those numbers can be found. Now we're going to graph the set of integers 0, 2, and negative 3 on a number line. Notice this number line is going to be vertical, like the blinds that go to your patio. So first one we're going to um, plot is going to be, or graph rather, is going to be the 0. Then they wanted you to graph the number 2. Notice that's a positive 2, so it's going to be up top. And then negative 3, which is going to be at the bottom. So it's as simple as that. 
Go ahead and do the two on your own problems here, which would take you about 30 seconds. All right, good. Hopefully you did well here. So we have to graph the points, so I want you to pay close attention as I'm graphing each point. To graph negative 3, we need to go behind the 0 to the left of it and graph the dot on the negative 3. Then the 0 will be plotted here, or graphed here rather. Negative 2 is going to be graphed here, and then the positive 4 is graphed here. Check your work and make sure that you got them all correct. Excellent. Now we're going to see the vertical number line. It says to graph each set of integers on the number line. So the, number line, or the numbers that we need to um, graph, or the integers rather, are positive 8, so you should have positive 8, negative 6, which would be graphed down here, negative 9, negative 9 was a little tricky because you don't actually see a negative 9, so we know though that negative 9 is between negative 8 and negative 10, and then positive 5. And again, that one's going to be a little tricky because there's not an actual number on the number line for positive 5. But we know that it is just between 4 and 6. So hopefully you did well, and we are going to continue to fly right through this lesson. Now we're looking at textbook page 348. All right, now you should be looking at textbook page 348. And as promised, when we scanned the lesson, we said we're going to learn about golf scores. And as you can tell from the funny little picture here, we're going to learn about golf. So now it says, Elena and her dad played golf on four different days. The data set, negative 1, positive 1, negative 3, and positive 2, shows Elena's score in relation to par. Graph the scores, explain the meaning of 0 in each, I'm sorry, in this situation. So before we actually go into the math portion of this, I think it's important to talk to you about what the word par means. When you talk about golf, par, um, and you may have actually heard the term uh, or the phrase par for the course, and it's like, for instance, if I have a student who doesn't do their homework, doesn't do their homework, doesn't do their homework, and they come in and they say, I didn't do my homework, I'd say, that's par for the course. Basically meaning, yeah, that's pretty much average. That's how it always is. So par, <coughs> when you're playing golf, the idea is to get the ball in the hole in less strokes or hits than the average person. So let's say you've got a hole from here and your little person is starting here. Yes, I would like you to draw this. So now let's say on a golf course, the average takes this person four strokes. A stroke means a hit, so each time you hit the ball. So it will take them four strokes to get the ball in the hole. So the idea is on each hole to get the ball in the hole in less strokes than the average person. So if on this we'll say that this is the first hole right here, you want to draw this, you want to write this. So if on this first hole right here, I get the ball in and say, this is where I get it for my first stroke and then my next stroke, and then I get it in to the hole on my third one. So if I get the ball in on three hits, now I am at a negative one. What that means is I am one under. It's also said one under, so you want to write one under. And what they mean is one under par, and par is the average. So right now, I'm doing better than the average person. Now when you have a positive score, that means, and yes, I'd like you to draw this little man too, when you have a positive, par, or positive score, that means on the same hole, that again, remember the whole idea here is the par, the four strokes. So on the same hole, this guy took one, two, three, four, and then let's say he took five hits to get it in. So now, so now what that means is he is one over par, or positive one. That means it took him, and so that would be written as one over par. That means it took him one additional stroke more than everyone else to get the ball in the hole. So that's not good. So in this situation, positive isn't good. So now you want to go ahead and graph the data like it shows here. So we're going to graph the data of negative one, which is here. So that was a good day for Elena and her dad, or Elena rather. Yeah, and then the next one is positive one. So that was a less than good day. That means that she did one worse than the average. And then negative three, that was a really good day for her, right? Because she was three strokes under what everybody else did. And then you have positive two, which was an eh, not so good day. Now, when I say everybody else, I'm not talking about the people she's golfing with. I'm talking about the average for the course. So when you go to play golf, it's nine holes, let's say, if that's half a course, actually. So let's say you're going to play nine holes. In that nine holes, each course has its, each, each hole has its own number of strokes that you're supposed to get the ball in. So it's a cumulative score, and it's already set by the course. Hopefully that clears that up a little bit.
And then at the bottom here, it says the, z the integer zero represents par. So now on the textbook page 348, numbers one through five, you want to work on your guided practice now. This should take you no time at all. And I have a funny, funny meme at the end. It says, if I have 10 pieces of bacon and my friend wants two pieces of bacon, how many pieces of bacon do I have left? Correct. I still have 10 because you're not getting any. Ha, 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 ha. So that was just my little funny math meme at the end.